From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. As we reported Monday evening, a wildfire east of Fairbanks drew a massive air and ground response and surprisingly, no structures were lost. The Canudi fire started in a neighborhood off of 17 Mile China Hot Springs Road and made for some very tense hours for the residents living in and around the immediate area. News Center 11 spoke today with the State Division of Forestry spokesman James Schwarber, who says the fire is an estimated 120 acres. Chena Hot Springs Road is open, but officials warn there could be traffic delays depending on fire and suppression activities, which are both occurring on both sides of the road. They say the Canuti fire is human caused, but they couldn't provide any details as an investigation is still underway. Schwarber credited what he called the quick and coordinated response of many agencies in averting injuries or loss of property. It was, it was imperative to have, have, have an immediate uh, response as possible. That's what we're set up to do. That's what we're trained to do. Uh, that's what took place last night. And also it's important to acknowledge the cooperators that, that also chipped in. The volunteer fire departments rolled their, their equipment to help with structure protection and to fight the flames. And so it was a real group effort. And, of course, the community itself pitched in where they could. You know, they didn't get in our way, but they also helped make sure that, uh, that their properties were as safe as could be, too, during, during that incident. So it was no one was injured, no, no properties were lost. Nothing was burned as, as far as we know at this point. State forestry officials also say a burn suspension prohibiting all outdoor burning is currently in effect in light of the warm temperatures that are happening locally. They say the interior could remain in extreme fire danger status at least until the weekend. Well, it's official in a news release issued earlier today. Alaska Lieutenant Governor Mead Treadwell says he's foregoing an attempt at re-election and instead has placed his sights on U.S. Senator Mark Begich and his seat in our nation's capital. Treadwell, a Republican, must first get by Tea Party favorite Joe Miller, however, in the GOP primary election. Issuing his own news release today, Miller says he welcomes Treadwell to the race, calling competition, quote, a good thing. Begich, who is thought to be one of the more vulnerable Senate incumbents up for re-election, won his first election over then-Senator Ted Stevens in 2008 by fewer than 4,000 votes. Earlier this year, in an exclusive interview, the News Center spoke with Treadwell about his intentions and why he's making his run. First off, I, I really think government has to stand up for our liberties. And uh, government was there to protect our liberties, not to take them away. And we just don't see that out of Washington too much. Uh, second, our government spending way too much money. I saw a bumper sticker the other day said, please don't tell President Obama what number comes after a trillion, because uh, we, we're just spending way too much and not cutting back where we need to. And the third is the Alaska agenda. Alaska always has to fight the battle for access to our lands and to prove to the country we're worth it. Officials with the Alaska Democratic Party were quick to respond to Treadwell's announcement, saying he plans to take a, quote, do-nothing record to the U.S. Senate, end quote. Party officials also say his announcement highlights his, quote, lack of understanding of Alaska's needs and how to get things done, end quote. State troopers have issued a citation to a man who gave barbecue meat to a bear on Saturday. The man, 38-year-old Jesus Mabalot, spotted the bear while riding a bike near Eklutna campground. Troopers say he tossed some meat to the animal a couple of times before he was attacked and mauled. His injuries were not serious, but the ticket for illegally feeding game has a fine of $310. Alaska tourist business got off to a late start this year due to the weather, but it's getting underway statewide with more people expected to visit this year than last. One of the places seeing the business is Skagway, Alaska. New Center 11's Monty Bowen visited Skagway and learned about their economy. Skagway is an Alaska port city that sees as many as four cruise ships a day. A couple of thousand people get off each one of those ships to tour the historic town or take a ride up the mountain on a train. Uh, if all four ships were at a full capacity, it would be about, uh, about 9,900 people in town. And that's pretty typical to run from about four to 10,000 people about seven days a week in Skagway from mid-May through mid-September roughly. For many in Skagway and other small towns of Alaska, the summer business is what keeps them going. We live for the summer in order to carry us through the winter. Some of the vendors are seasonal are just here for the summer, but we're open year-round. If it wasn't for tourism, Skagway would have a whole different economy. We do have the minerals, and so we have the dock, and um, we do get a lot of minerals from the Yukon that come through this port, go off to China or wherever. 
Um, so we do have other things going on, but tourism is the biggest. When September comes, things slow down considerably. And we have about half the staff that works year round and that's a good time of the year for us to go on our vacations and things like that. Having people arrive on ships is nothing new for the town. And since the Klondike Gold Rush, when people are coming through, this town was built to get people off the ships and pass through town here and then move on their way. We've been doing that since um, 1897 and we continue today. So it's kind of how the town started and how it continues today. So it's very important, along with the railroad and other things, it's, it's really what keeps us alive today. Skagway is not a ghost town in the off season. We have a very active year-round community here though in the middle of winter and December. We have the Santa train, a lot of really neat uh, things that the community kind of rallies to keep us inspired until the next summer season. Monty Bowen, New Center 11. All right, when we come back, a push is on to rename Mount McKinley. And North Pole is getting a new library. Those stories are next. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Alaska Chamber of Commerce was formed in 1952, a few years before Alaska was granted statehood with the purpose of promoting a positive business environment in Alaska. Today at the Carlson Center, the current president and CEO for the Alaska Chamber of Commerce was in town to address the general membership luncheon for the Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce. She told the gathering of business leaders and employees that the Alaska Chamber of Commerce joins with other chambers from across the state to ensure the Alaska legislation continues to work towards a long list of requirements and goals to support the state's future economy. Absolutely. Uh, what we have found is that when the Alaska Chamber speaks, because of our broad and broad base of different types of businesses, legislators listen. And that is revealed in the fact that 24 pieces of the 34 pieces of specific legislation that we supported this year passed in the first year of a two-year session. Senator Lisa Murkowski's long-standing pledge to officially rename America's tallest mountain is gaining ground in Washington, D.C. This week, the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee advanced legislation that would rename Mount McKinley to its traditional Koyokan Athabascan name Denali. Translation of the name varies, but it is often considered to mean the high one or the great one. The committee approved the measure by voice vote, which clears it for consideration by the full Senate. Murkowski's bill, S-155, would make Denali the official name of the peak, which Alaskans have called for decades. I was in Alaska this weekend. It's absolutely glorious all over the state. And everyone was just talking about, I saw the mountain. The mountain is out today. The mountain is Denali. And it is the big one. And it deserves to be called the name that the, that the Athabascans from the interior have, have called it for, for decades and decades and decades. Today, local officials gathered in North Pole outside of the high school to celebrate a new public building that is being constructed. North Pole Public Library had its official groundbreaking ceremony and construction has begun. After many years of planning, the library was able to finally get the funding necessary to begin the building process. Many local government officials spoke to the need of having this library for the 30,000 residents in the North Pole area who can't make the drive into Fairbanks to utilize the public library there. Well, we're really excited about having this library uh, come to fruition after the uh, long years of planning and input of so many people. Now we will have uh, enough room for young people, for the general public, we won't have to step over little kids. We will have a teenage collection of books for the first time because um, there was not enough room for more books. They were literally if new books came in, they literally had to take one off the shelf in order to make room for it. If you thought vices like smoking and drinking were the only things to shorten your lifespan, think again. A recent article in the New York Times highlights how sleep deprivation is harmful to your health. New Center 11's Monty Bowen has more in this week's Health Report. Eight hours of sleep. It's what we need, but researchers say one-third of all Americans simply are not getting enough. I go to bed at a decent time, but yet I don't get straight restful sleep. Things that need to be done, laundry that needs to be done, or have to get up early and go to work. And it's not just too much work and not enough time that's keeping us awake. It's just watching TV, but it could be playing on the computer, or the iPad, or the iPhone, whatever is handy. The average person is sleeping about four to six hours a day. 
and that is two hours less than what we should be getting. Sleep-deprived people are three times more likely to get everyday infections like colds and flu. No matter what age we are, from kids to teens to elderly, sleep deprivation affects us all. Being well-rested and alert are also crucial behind the wheel. Some experts even suggest that lack of sleep can shorten your life. Considering all the medical problems that are associated with sleep deprivation, getting an adequate amount of sleep will help your health in the long run. Monty Bowen, New Center 11. The Health Report is brought to you by the Ear, Nose, and Throat Clinic, located in the Medical Dental Arts Building. Call 456-7768. Wake up, Steph. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Coming up in sports, Joe Cook has the highlights from last night's Gold Panthers game that featured a pivotal fourth inning. See what happened. Also, some Midnight Sun events will be happening this weekend. Tonight, he'll highlight the one with the round ball. wonder what that could be. Mm. Stay tuned. Sports is next. Mm.